So the guy who invented the purification of petroleum jelly, he actually ate a spoonful every day. Welcome to the very first episode of Rewind Explainer where we rewind everyday consumer product that we all use to see how things are made, but in reverse. We're gonna trace it all the way back to the raw materials of each product to better understand the traceability, sustainability, and see if it's generally a good product for us to keep using. Now, we're gonna start off with our household essential that you probably grew up with, which is Vaseline, AKA petroleum jelly. It's a product found in almost every household. It's probably something that your parents or even your grandparents used it on you too. It's relatively affordable. It does the job at sealing in the moisture. And it's also literally found in every single grocery store in the United States and probably across the world too. Now, thanks to TikTok, it is now back in trend, but it's definitely not without controversy. Well, my number four thing you've got to keep away from your face is petroleum jelly. I actually think everybody should own a nice tub of white petrolatum. Scientific studies on petroleum jelly have revealed that it really doesn't measure up to the hype. Petroleum jelly is great, and it's one of a dermatologist's main medicine tips and tricks. So what's the deal with petroleum jelly? Let's rewind it. Petroleum jelly is a waxy, translucent ointment that has almost no odor. And as the name signifies, it is derived from petroleum. Yep, that petroleum as in oil, the gas that goes into our cars and also powers our entire world. Now, it's something that it's mind-blowing to think about where it actually came from. So how did it end up here? You probably most likely bought it from the store, so let's start there. Petroleum jelly is definitely one of the most popular cosmetic products in the United States. In 2021 alone, there were more than 41 million units that got sold over the counter. And that means one out of 10 Americans bought one tub of petroleum jelly, and that is mind blowing. But how does it arrive at your local drugstore? Like most things, petroleum jelly arrive at the retailers from manufacturing facilities. And the top exporters of petroleum jellies were China, Germany, Germany, US, South Africa, and the Netherlands. Normally, petroleum jellies come in this really bland but also pretty iconic blue cap. <laughs> and according to Vaseline's website, this entire jar is made out of number five plastic, which is polypropylene. So depending on where you live, this may or it may not be recyclable. So if I can make one suggestion to Vaseline, it would be to change it to a PT material to increase the chance of recycling. Or another option is to increase the recycled content into this packaging. How is petroleum jelly manufactured? I decided to get some help and consult an expert. There are lots of ways to physically separate and chemically purify it so that it doesn't have any toxic stuff in it, or at least whatever toxic stuff in it is at such a low concentration that it is safe. Each supplier would have its own unique and proprietary way of distilling and refining the product, but roughly speaking, it goes through several steps of distillation, filtration, and hydrogenation in order to remove all the substances and components that are likely carcinogenic or likely harmful to the people. It's a bit tempting to think that where something comes from tells us something about its safety, but it doesn't. A lot of natural things are actually quite toxic. Nature is very good at working out how to kill us. So petroleum is full of substances that are made from carbon and hydrogen, and some of these are carcinogenic. So because petroleum jelly comes from petroleum, there's some suspicion from some people. The cancer-causing compounds don't get removed completely from the petroleum jelly. And it's the PAHs, which are polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, that are a bit of a concern. They're found in lots of other everyday things as well, such as if you burn a candle, if you have a campfire, you'll get some of these PAHs. So petroleum jelly goes through purification to remove a lot of the less nice substances in the petroleum jelly. There are so many processes. It completely depends on the manufacturer. But I guess the important thing is at the end, that final product has to pass a number of tests before it can be counted as pharmaceutical grade or cosmetic grade. Depending on the amount of purification, the final product will then achieve a certain grade of purity. So there are lots and lots of different grades of petroleum jelly available. There's industrial grades, and these tend to be used for things like lubing up metal parts in different machines. And so that is going to be a less purified, less high quality grade compared to something like cosmetic grade or pharmaceutical grade or even food grade. Wait, petroleum jellies in our foods? 
Yeah, so the apple coating, the wax that protects the apple and stops it from drying out on the shelf, that can contain a bunch of petroleum jelly slash mineral oil. Also coatings on things like cardboard boxes. Now we know petroleum jelly is literally everywhere, even in our food. Let's rewind one step back to the source and trace where the petroleum jelly that got refined actually come from. Yep, oil fields. Today, US, Russia, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, and Canada accounts for half of the world's total crude oil production. The crude oil then gets converted into all sorts of different petroleum products, including petroleum jelly, which actually accounts for less than 1% of all petroleum products. And there isn't any petroleum that's being dug up to create a petroleum jelly that's for cosmetics and pharmaceutical use, or even food use. It's just a byproduct product of another industry. Now, this is super interesting when thinking about the environmental impact of petroleum jelly. Yes, it sounds bad that petroleum jelly is actually coming from a fossil fuel industry, but if we manage to decarbonize transport, and yes, if we manage to reduce our overall reliance of the fossil fuel industry, then digging up petroleum or digging up new crude oil to produce petroleum jelly would be environmentally detrimental. But as it stands, as it being a byproduct of another industry, I would have to say it doesn't really have a negative environmental impact at this point. But back to how we turn such a hardcore raw material into an amazingly beneficial cosmetics and pharmaceutical product. At this point I'm wondering who the hell decided to use a crude oil byproduct on their skin in the first place. And the story starts from the 1800s. There was an American chemist named Robert Chesebro or Cheesebro, I'm totally butchering the last name here, but Robert Cheesebro, he was traveling through the oil fields of Pennsylvania and he discovered that the oil drillers or the workers' hand were incredibly soft for such a rough job. Then he witnessed the workers would put on this black goo or this waxy substance on their hand and and it'll magically heal their skin. They call this rod wax because it was found around the pumps and other machineries on the rigs. After studying this, Cheese Bro discovered by distilling and refining this substance, he could then create this light colored gel that's almost like an ointment that doesn't have any odor. He would name this new invention petroleum jelly. And in 1865, he then marketed as what we know now, Vaseline. Ta-da! Let's go back even further in time, like casually, maybe 200 millions ago. The way that we get petroleum is actually from burial and compaction of ancient organisms over time. So these ancient organisms die, they get lots of layers of dirt on top of them, and they get compacted and pressurized over millions of years to turn into petroleum. So that is actually quite natural. As many of you know, crude oil as well as coal and natural gas are non-renewable resources that were formed millions of years ago when prehistoric plants and animals died and were buried underneath the layers of rock. Most crude oil comes from the organic matter that died between 10 and 180 million years ago. However, 10% is even older than that and dates from the Paleozoic era more than 200 million years ago. So should we stop using petroleum jelly because it is derived from petroleum? Well, the answer is definitely complicated. There definitely are great alternatives like beeswax and other natural alternatives, but those also come with their own downsides as well. I think it's really hard to beat petroleum jelly for what it does. Petroleum jelly is the gold standard occlusive moisturizer and it is really, really good at this. The next closest competitor only really does about 50% of what petroleum jelly does and the natural alternatives are even worse. Also, interestingly, natural alternatives don't have much of this regulation around them compared to petroleum jelly. In a sense, there is so much more scrutiny of petroleum jelly than a lot of other ingredients that I feel like it's very, very safe. Yeah, overall, we should definitely reduce our reliance on the fossil fuel industry, but as long as the fossil fuel is currently powering our entire world, I think petroleum jelly production is almost kind of eliminating waste, which was a byproduct of the petroleum industry. It's definitely more important for brands to focus on measuring and tracking and reducing their carbon footprint instead of literally demonizing one single ingredient just because it is petroleum derived.
Thank you guys so much for watching our very first episode of Rewind Explainer. Let me know in the comment box below on what other products that you would like us to research and rewind. I'll speak to you guys later. Bye!